Are you thinking about getting into hard gel but are overwhelmed with all the different options that's out there on the market today? This is going to be for you. Hard gel is a great option that you should be offering your clients if you are thinking about expanding your services. So it's good for clients, one, to just have something alternative to try other than the normal acrylic and gel manicures and stuff, but also to if you come across a client that is allergic, that becomes allergic to acrylic, this is a great option to offer them. So some people like hard gel over acrylic because of its flexibility. It feels a little bit more lightweight and there are a lot of benefits in offering hard gel enhancements. But I know when you look up hard gel or you try to do research and you watch videos on YouTube, it's overwhelming. I know when I started doing hard gel, I was like, I don't, what is this is thick, this is thin, this is in a tube, this is a bottle. I don't know what's what. So let's just break down what you should be jumping right into as a beginner for hard gel services. So the first thing is builder gel. Builder gel is gonna just be, that's gonna be your go-to. Builder gel is it. If you are a beginner and you're overwhelmed with all the search options and everything, builder gel is going to be your go-to as a beginner. This is going to be the gel that you're gonna use. It has thick viscosity. It builds up in layers. You can work with it. It's not self-leveling like some of the others. So it's not so runny and everything and you can kind of have more control when you're using builder gel so that's going to be your go-to if you're just starting out with hard gel i recommend builder gel because of its thick viscosity and you just simply do that with it you build it up in layers we keep building up the gel so it creates a nice thick durable enhancement that's going to last your client for a very long time so within builder gel it can come in several different forms so this is where gel gets a little confusing because there's several different types but they all come in different forms so builder gel you're going to see in several different options so the first one you would see is your common one is going to come in a pot it's going to look like a little container like this we call this pot gel so every time you see something say pots they're referring to this then we have newer versions of stuff and a tube so it squeezes out in a tube and then we have more conveniently, builder in a bottle. So three different types, all the same viscosity, same thing, all builder gels, but just three different ways. So if you do use the traditional one in a pot, you will need to get a gel brush. So gel brushes differ from acrylic brushes in that they're a little bit smaller. They have more of a rounded edge for you to kind of float and pat into. And it's different than your standard acrylic brush. So it does come in like Kalinsky hairs. It is natural and all that stuff like that. But the shape of it is going to be a little different. I actually have a different one here. But again, smaller, still, they all have that rounded thing. So when you're searching, you don't want to just type, you know, brush for nails and stuff. You want to actually type building gel or hard gel brush and look at something that's going to be like this. So again, this is on Amazon. I have this on my storefront as well. But you can find this very easily, very cheap. But you're going to be using a brush when you're using your traditional pot when you are picking up your gel and placing it onto the nail. Okay, so let me show you how these three different gels work. Okay, let's go over the three different types of gel. So the first one that we're gonna do is we're going to do the one in the pot. So we can see that the consistency is super thick. Like this is not going anywhere no matter what you do. So I'm going to just take my brush you want to just have like a little paper towel just to kind of like dab. So I want to take my brush and I'm going to dip into the thing. So we want to pick up a good amount so we can see that consistency is really, really, really thick. So you can kind of pile it onto the nail. It's going to be stringy. Kind of let it do its thing. Sometimes I'll swirl it like so. And we're going to take a glob and we're going to place it on the nail. So the difference is with gel is that you don't want to brush it. We are trained to think that we should be brushing it like acrylic and I'm actually going to float it. So if you see, my brush is never really going to hit the nail. I'm going to float it. It's never really, it's just going to guide it. And in small circles, I'm going to float it 
And this was an excessive glob, but I just wanted to be dramatic on camera, but because you don't want to get air bubbles if it's too big. So I'm going to float my gel. And again, this is Builder. So some people you'll see do, they like to do a big blob to kind of coat most of the nail. And then you'll see some people do like several layers. So I like to just do this again. If I do it from the side, hopefully it won't run on me. Let me just, you see that my brush is never touching the nail. It's floating. And you can't go from like this side to just jump to this side because you see it's stringy. So you have to float it small circles. And it's always a small circle. So even when I want to bring it down, I have to do small circles to bring it down, small circles to bring it to the left, to the right. If I want to bring this down and then I'm going to just do up and down floating to kind of move some of that product down. And then I got to work my way back over to the side because you got to keep that connection no matter what you do. And I'm just going to guide it this way. You can't really pull it too much. You don't really want to do that. You want to just guide it. If I see that I have an air bubble, I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's a little air bubble here. What I'll do is just go back over that area and usually just floating over it. It's going to get rid of that air bubble. So again, that was a big blob, but you see that it coated most of the nail. It does take time. It's not as fast as acrylic. You can't rush the process of gel. So if you're somebody that kind of genuinely likes to work fast or you're just very impatient, this might not be for you. Um, I am somebody kind of like that. So it does get a little annoying. But when you're done, you just work your way all the way to the end and then you kind of just release. So there we have the tube. And don't worry about the shape or anything because gel files amazingly. So this is the pot version. We can see it from the side. Still, so we don't really have like kind of an apex. That's what I would work on for the next layer. I would kind of build a little bit of structure. But for now, it has full coverage. We see it's not too thick. That was a good, blob, a good little blob. And we can see. So that's the one in the tube. So I'm going to put this to the side and let this guy cure while I move on to the next one. So the next one we're going to do is the one in the tube. So the tube is very cool because it's made to work directly from the tube. So it eliminates the need for a brush. It's like kind of one stop. It comes right out. However, in my opinion, I do feel like, like the hole for the tube it can be a little wide. It does come out in a nice bulk. So I tend to use a, the tube to get it onto the nail and then I'll use the brush to kind of work it. So for example, I'll show you a little bit of both. We're gonna squeeze this. If you see, it's not, we don't want air pockets to come out. So we wanna make sure that we kind of squeeze that tube from the top, make sure some is coming out. And I usually wipe that first little bead off. And then I'm going to squeeze holding it like a pencil and I'm going to squeeze a big glob onto the nail. So again, I can work it this way. Same concept It's coming right from the bottle. The only thing is you got to work it and squeeze at the same time because you don't want too much to come out. So I'm going to work it and squeeze. So I'm squeezing. I do feel like doing it like this. Sometimes again, if you have air inside that tube, sometimes it'll come out and you'll hear like the sound and you have an air pocket. So it'll give you an air pocket. So you can do it like this. Again, making that connection and just guiding it. Very simple. Or like I said before, I could squeeze a whole bunch out because it does give me, you know, it's a lot less messy than the tube. And then just go back in with my brush and work it. So sometimes you see how I feel like I, I have a little bit more control. I can move a little bit quicker when I am using the brush. So this was a big glob. So what I'm going to do is same thing we do with acrylic where I can kind of just I'm going to bring that all the way to the edge and you see this that's hanging that's a little excess i'm going to cut it release wipe that off and then 
make that connection again and just continue with what I was doing. So I see that it's a little, again, with gel, it files so nice that we don't even need to worry about the shape or everything. We just want coverage. And then the second layer, again, for me, I use it to build. So, because we see we, we got a little, we went from almond to a little bit of oval, but it's all good because you can file that away. I'm just showing you how each one works. So again, same concept, still floating it. This is it from the side, from the front. We're not really working. I can always work on my shaping in the next bead. So that's how the tube works. So now I'm gonna cure this guy for two minutes. So lastly, we have the builder in a bottle. This I love because we see that the consistency is just as thick. It's just as thick. I feel like it is a little bit thinner because you can't really float it or, you know, you don't want to kind of float it. So this one's a little unique in that we want to collect it on the brush. So this is going to be our brush in a sense. So I have it on my brush. And for this one, you almost do want to you want to float it and you can float it but i feel that it's a little bit better for a beginner because you can almost paint it so you see how it's thick to build but it's not as thick as the other one so if i were to kind of paint it on it wouldn't be the worst case scenario the only thing is that if you do paint it on you're going it's going to take longer because if I just paint this on, I got to do like nothing happened. I got to do more coats. So you can do that or you can collect a big glob. Get it all on the brush. Because it's on a bottle, it's really hard to kind of collect but so much. So I'm going to try to take as much as I can. I have a lot. You don't really have control over your glob because it's, it's thick in the bottle. But either way, I can take this. Let's start from the beginning. And I can still use this brush to float that product on. So you just want to make sure that you're doing enough. Again, I feel like, like you see the other ones, I was able to do one shot. One big, one big um, ball, and I was able to cover the whole entire nail and give me the, the total thickness. For this, I would have to go in several times thin or keep making that connection. So I gotta go back at it again, drop that bead, and then work it. It doesn't move again. It has that viscosity where it's not going to move on you, but. And that's kind of it. Like, I kind of feel like I lost it in the middle over here because you want to start off. So you can see this one. I'm sorry for the construction. If you hear the noise in the background, I just, you know, you think it's going to be quiet, but it's not. So this is that one. But you can see from the side, it is a little off you see that midsection but i think that was when i was demoing and showing you guys like if i started off thick i might have been able to pull it off because you can see the thickness of it it's not it's not too bad i would go in with a second coat but for demo purposes you can see the difference so i'm gonna go ahead and cure that okay so here we see our three nails the three different types so we have the pot the two and the brush on you can see the thickness of the three of them kind of compared. Let me put it on top. So we see how they kind of worked out. So again, you can see that the thickness of the third one isn't as thick as the other two. I would have to go in a little bit more with the builder. And then you see the size of the bottle. So that plays a part too. I feel like you run through it a lot quicker. You're going to get more bang for your buck with the tube or the pot. But 
this is a little bit easier if you are beginning or if you wanted to start doing structured manicures and you're just painting on someone's natural nails very thinly maybe one or two coats that's an excellent alternative and service addition that you can add so now that you see that that's work i definitely recommend if you are starting out the one in the bottle it's it's kind of just easier it does the work for you it lets you get a little bit comfortable with the product i've found that i really really love i'm an acrylic girl most of my career i've only recently in the past couple few years gotten into hard gel but it you know once you kind of learn it and you get it it's a beautiful product to work with especially for encapsulations i only use gel for encapsulations now for repairs when i have a big toe i actually use this gel in a bottle because i can just take it over to the pedicure station fix the big toe that's splitting and it's going to last them it lasts them a couple pedicures before i have to even fill it in or cut it and remove it or whatever the case may be so definitely the builder is kind of more of a go-to and then I would maybe recommend the tube the pots while they are traditional they do take a little bit more work so you want to just get familiar with the product but just remember guys that gel if you're getting into gel and you're mainly an acrylic person it's two different worlds whatever you taught yourself and you train yourself about acrylic about how we sculpt and we let the acrylic flow and we pat it and we brush it it's really mental. You have to take that out of your mind and train yourself for a new process. That's the hardest part of switching either from gel to acrylic or from acrylic to gel. They are two different worlds. So keep practicing. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave them down in the comment below. And if you want to know more about gel, I have a whole video where I break down all the different types of gels, the products, demo, all that stuff for you i will leave a link to that video down below and you can go check that out if you're interested do not forget to hit like and subscribe and stay tuned every day this month leading up to christmas as i post nail tips tricks tutorials vlogs and all that stuff for vlogmas thank you so much for watching and i'll see you tomorrow bye